Hey guys, welcome to Weekly Weird News, and this episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Vincero, and we'll talk about them later, but first let's get into the weird news. Now, over in Perth, Australia, one suburb was recently terrorized by a sex pest, brazenly flashing his disgusting penis to any woman unlucky enough to find herself in his path. He got away with this for months, thanks largely to the fact that most of his flashings were committed while seated on a moving bike. Uh, by the time a victim realized what she was looking at, he was already halfway gone having fully gotten off. Uh, the women of Perth's Apple Cross neighborhood lived in fear every time they left the house, wondering when, not if, their eyes would be subjected to the penis terrorizing their community. Anyways, uh, for every villain, there must be a hero, though. Meet Cop Kong. Part cop, part gorilla, and 100% done with having to look at that guy's dick. Sick and tired about nothing being done about her neighborhood's unwanted exposed penis, one local woman decided to take the law into her own hands and deliver some street justice. So she posted some warning flyers around the neighborhood and staked out with a camera and a bike, ready to photograph the flasher and pursue him if necessary. If he didn't leave a bread crumb trail. I'm just jacking it and just leaving the trail right mm. to where he is. Mm. Now we're not really sure why, but uh, she did this while also wearing a gorilla costume and a police costume on top of the gorilla costume. And uh, yeah, boys, she's got an Instagram. Yeah, anyways, regardless of whether assuming a new identity as a guerrilla cop in the middle of the Australian summer was at all necessary, because it had to be warm in there, yeah. Cop Kong's efforts ended up proving successful. After three whole days of just sort of sitting in the park in full costume waiting to see a penis, she finally spotted the man, got some photos, called the police, and chased him on her own bike while on the phone with the police and in full costume, Jeez. which had to have been difficult and unsafe and sweaty. It's actually but, genius uh, though, because then she's not impersonating a police officer. She's impersonating she, a, gorilla, a gorilla and cop. the gorilla is impersonating the police Only officer. Only a fool would believe that the police would appoint a gorilla to the force. Yeah, it's like identity laundering. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the plan worked. The man was caught and arrested. All thanks to Cop Kong, the gorilla cop, who is neither gorilla nor cop, but is still a crime fighter. Yeah. Uh, but regardless, thanks to Cop Kong's unorthodox methods, <laughs> I might not like your methods, but you get it done. Here's a banana. Yeah, now the view of Swan River from the Jeff Joseph Riverside Reserve in Applecross, Melville, Perth, Western Australia is now dick free. Thanks, Cop Kong. Yeah. Uh, in other news, over here in the US, the National Parks Department recently admitted that. Uh-oh, turns out there's a bucket full of uranium uh, with no lid on it that's been sitting inside the Grand Canyon Museum exposing tourists and employees to radiation for 18 years. Uh-oh. Have you been there? I haven't. I have not either. So, oops. Oh, and uh, it was actually three buckets full of uranium, but only one of them had no lid because that, that one was so full of uranium that the lid didn't fit. Oh, uh, good. Oh, well, just leave it. Anyways, how those three five-gallon buckets of raw uranium ore ended up just sort of sitting there collecting dust right next to a taxidermy exhibit that hundreds of tourists visit every day, it's unknown. Apparently, prior to the year 2000, the buckets had been kept downstairs in storage for decades before someone decided to bring them upstairs for whatever reason. And there they stayed <laughs> for the next 18 years. And I would wonder why they were downstairs either. Well, I mean, they're... There are a lot of uranium mines in the Grand Canyon area. So, I mean, like, it, it's around. I don't know. It seems like something you just, like, I feel like there's got to be a government agency. You're like, hey, got some uranium. Come pick it up. They're like, yeah, sure. Cool. But, yeah, the presence of this radioactive material, it just sat there for 18 years. It was only discovered when, last March, the teenage son of a park employee, who just happened to be a Geiger counter enthusiast, started taking measurements around their parents' workplace and noticed some unusually high readings coming from these three nondescript buckets. Parks employees finally realized that they should, I don't know, do something about this, so they moved the buckets to a different room. Oh, cool. There we go. See you in 18 years, buckets. Uh, a few months later, though, the Grand Canyon's manager of health, safety, and wellness, Elston Stevenson, came through to do a little safety audit and was understandably horrified to hear about all this for the first time from the employees who were casually informing him about it. Oh man, have you seen the uranium <laughs> buckets? Buckets of what? <laughs> you, wanna, you wanna see them? It's not a lot of uranium, it's just 15 gallons of it. Yeah, it's fine. Anyway, Stevenson called up some national park specialists over in Colorado and told them about it so they could properly take care of the situation. But these so-called specialists didn't even have their own Geiger counter. <laughs> So they drove from Colorado to Utah to borrow someone else's. They should have just asked the son. <laughs> or ordered it off Amazon. I did, yeah, 
Yeah. Anything else. <laughs> Seems like a bit of a drive to to do that when you could just yeah, order one. These things, they're around. Uh, anyways, they, they then came to Arizona a few days later to deal with the uranium. But in addition to not having their own Geiger counter, they didn't have any hazmat gear either. So they ended up using dishwashing and gardening gloves for protection and lifted the buckets onto their pickup truck using a broken mop handle. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> the fuck is going on? They then drove about two miles away to a decommissioned uranium mine known as Orphan Mine and just dumped the buckets. <laughs> just send it home. This uranium wants to be with its family in the decommissioned uranium mine. Well, they, and you know what? The, the uranium that was there, they wouldn't even accept it because it had turned 18. No, you get out. <laughs> uh, they also refused to show their radiation meter readings to Stevenson, the guy in charge of the health and safety, uh, fearing that this problem had not been fully or properly solved. In November, Stevenson drove over to Phoenix and filled a report out with OSHA. They then sent inspectors over to the museum, this time with the proper tools and protective gear. Uh, and instead of just finding, I don't know, some trace radiation left over, their readings went off so much that it was almost as if those buckets were still there. Because it turns out they were. Why? <laughs> Why is this story getting worse every step? <laughs> Someone at the parks department, possibly in need of some buckets, had gone to Orphan Mine, retrieved the uranium buckets, poured out their contents, and then brought the empty buckets back to the Grand Canyon Museum not realizing that they were radioactive still, even without the uranium in it. I am shocked <laughs> and appalled. <laughs> and we need to give our parks and uh, more money yeah. because they're using dishwashing gloves and a broken mop handle. Then and then they need they need buckets. So this buckets all comes, are like $5 at Home Depot. Yeah. I, I believe this all comes down to severe budget cuts. Because like you look, a lot of people look at a story like this and be like, these are the people you want running your health care. I'm like... They literally went back to a fucking abandoned mine to get an empty bucket because they didn't have a fucking bucket. Yeah. I think they just need some money. I'm already anticipating the people in the comments being like, Ricky doesn't even know how much buckets cost these days. <laughs> he is so disconnected from reality. I got I got like multiple of the orange bucket at Home Depots with that Elmer guy on it. Like, yeah, they last forever. Yeah. They last They're forever. They're like two dollars. They give them away. Yeah, you can put uranium in them and they'll still last. Yeah. They were good buckets. <laughs> you had to go back and get them. <laughs> no, those are our best buckets! <laughs> Gotta go get them. Now, it's unclear what happened to those buckets, but in light of everything, Stevenson felt unsatisfied <laughs> with how the issue was being officially dealt with because it's illegal to expose people to radiation for years and not tell them. Oh, really? The <laughs> government says I can't expose people to radiation? So he pressured the park superintendents to take action, and they did nothing. So then he contacted the FBI, the Office of the U.S. Inspector General, the Office of the Secretary of the Interior, and wrote letters to every member of Congress... He also sent an email to the entire Grand Canyon staff saying, if you were in the Museum Collections Building 2C between the year 2000 and June 18, 2018, you were exposed to uranium by OSHA's definition. Oh. So as long as I stayed out of that room for 18 years, you're saying I'm fine. Oh, uh, and then he finally went to the media, which is probably what he should have done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's really the only reason we're even hearing about this now. So, yeah. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, just really, a lot of steps of complete failure and dereliction of duty before he's like, wait, newspapers. I'll tell the newspaper. Mm. Anyways, uh, despite it not being good to keep mul multiple buckets of raw uranium around in a room that's frequently visited by small children for extended periods of time, it's unclear how bad the situation actually is. Several experts have weighed in and said that despite this whole situation being embarrassing and stupid, the actual danger posed by the uranium buckets was probably pretty negligible. Uh, if people had been like holding the raw uranium in their hands for extended periods of time or like licking it or I don't know, that would be bad. But simply being in the same room as the uranium buckets probably only exposed people to slightly more radiation than what's already present in the air around us, which great, sounds fine. But also I, I think most people would prefer to just not be exposed to uranium like at all in the first place. Yeah. That, that'd be better. Is it better or worse than flying on an airplane? I don't know. I don't know. This whole, like, radiation, it's like... You just got to microdose it, like we said yeah, on the other weekly weird. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah a little bit of radiation These fine, people right? are probably stronger, Superhumans. faster, mm -hmm. better. At everything. Yeah. But hey, if the radiation is not going to kill us, climate change might. 
As you may have noticed, weather has gotten more and more extreme over the past few years, and this winter has once again broken temperature records in various places across the world. Even here, in temperate Los Angeles, there's been unusually high amounts of rain and even some brief snow in places that, that you know, that kind of thing it only happens once every decade or more. It's unusual. It's very strange. In general, though, even when it's extreme, the weather here is not very bad at all compared to a lot of places, and you're well within your rights to laugh and point and just make fun of us anytime we complain about having to put on a sweatshirt to go outside. <laughs> it's beautiful out today, by the it's way. It's a very nice day out today. But things could get a lot worse for us. Yeah, so this year's unusually high amount of rain in California has made a lot of people remember a time in our state's early history when absolutely apocalyptic rains created the worst natural disaster in California's recorded history. The Great Flood of 1862 was the result of basically an entire month straight of heavy rain, which turned Sacramento into a canal city and turned much of the California Central Valley into an inland sea that was over 20 feet deep in some parts. Meanwhile, one-fourth of all livestock was killed, uh, one in eight homes was destroyed, and the state almost went bankrupt because so much of the property that had previously been subject to property taxes no longer existed. Damn. All that happened, though, while barely anyone actually lived here. In 1862, there was around 400,000 people in California. Uh, for perspective, California's current population is 100 times that, <laughs> 40 million. So this kind of flood could definitely do some damage, and at some point, it, it, it will. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Scientists are fairly certain that an 1862-style flood has happened in California every 100 to 200 years since, I don't know, basically forever. And it's been 157 years. I, I'm thinking we're going to get the, the wombo combo and get an earthquake and a flood. Earthquake and a flood. Whoa, waterbed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Biggest when, jacuzzi in the world. And when it does happen, it could end up being the worst and most expensive natural disaster in U.S. history. Because in addition <laughs> to all the property damage, the California Central Valley that previously had turned into an inland sea is nowadays where 13% of America's crops are grown and is the only place where crops like peaches, almonds, figs, pomegranates, raisins, pistachios, walnuts, and plums are grown on a large commercial scale. Not my almond milk, or as as the dairy community wants us to call it, nut juice. Nut juice. Mmm, nut juice. Got a nut emergency. You know, it was actually very, uh, it was very eye-opening when I went to Florence uh, over my Christmas break, Florence, yeah. Italy. They had a huge flood uh, in like the 50s or 60s and it was so bad it was like 15 15 feet high in, yeah. in the city and they have markers on the buildings that show you where the flood uh, levels were when you're walking around yeah all, all the any city that's been around more than a couple hundred years has some especially ins on, insane, on a river yeah and that's where most cities are built because of commerce back yeah in uh, a long long time ago because you use a boat to get things to certain places not me Put it on a donkey. I'm going to build a city in the middle of fucking dead desert. And I'm going to put the center of the city 20 miles from the ocean. It's gonna I'm going to call it Los Angeles. Yeah. And then um, I'm going to then I'm gonna take a bunch of land from a bunch of dumb farmers and build an aqueduct 300 miles long. That's our water now, idiot. Dumbass. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Watch the movie Chinatown. Anyways, uh, it probably won't happen this winter. Even if it does, we'll probably be fine because thanks to Los Angeles County's Whittier Dam, which, uh, oh wait, never mind. Uh, that was recently deemed not up to code and in need of $600 million in upgrades um, ASAP. Uh, it's been moved to the Army Corps of Engineers' number one priority nationwide. So hopefully between now and when that's all fixed up, we don't also get a flood of biblical proportions. Yeah. All we got to do is avoid that and also avoid another catastrophic San Andreas quake and measles, none of which we have control over, and we're good. Yeah, we'll be fine. Yeah. Completely fine. Anyways, while we're still alive, though, it's time for a word from this week's sponsor, Vincero. Luxury watches handcrafted at fair prices. Vincero's mission is to create compelling luxury timepieces with impeccable craftsmanship to inspire as many people as possible to elevate their game and ultimately live their legacy. For Vincero, luxury is a process. It's not about specs or price, and luxury isn't just a marketing term. It's about attention to detail and a step-by-step -step process to craft every product. That's what separates Vincero from the competition. The belief that you deserve the best, loyal viewer. Vincero has sponsored us before, uh, but they're always putting out new products, and this time they've got the Rogue series, which combines the elegance that you see in all their other watches which, with the durability and water resistance of a sports watch. Hmm. There's also plenty of new colors and configurations of their existing watches, so just go check it all out by visiting 
mincerowatches.com slash WWN. FEB19. Links are down below. Just use the link. Uh, and uh, enter code WEIRD15 at checkout to get 15% off your entire order. Exceptionally crafted, fairly priced. Get a Vincero watch at vincerowatches.com slash WWNFeb19 or link down below. Use the promo code WEIRD15 when you check out to save 15%. And now, time for some headlines. Headlines. Florida student, 11, arrested after not reciting Pledge of Allegiance. Land of the free, baby. So the pledge is fucking uh, weird. I hate the pledge. It's so weird. Dude, just get rid of the pledge. It's fucking... The whole reason for the pledge is, like, back from the time when America was straight up convinced that the Soviets were, like... Gonna, Infiltrating. They and, were, like, yeah, brainwashing, brainwashing people. Yeah, they're yeah. like, I need you all to stand up right now and promise that you love America. Yeah. And I've said it before, too. When I was in elementary school, we would do the pledge every day. And then on Fridays, they would make us all stand there and listen to, and if you knew the word, sing to Lee Greenwood's uh, Proud to be an American. I'm not fucking joking. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, over the school intercom. Like, this is, this is- It's a copyright violation. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> That's the big problem. <laughs> yeah. no, this is the kind of thing you see in uh, authoritarian countries where, not not countries where you, you have First Amendment right to expression, which this child was doing by not standing up for the Pledge of Allegiance. And the, the school, they already had a policy where they're like, yeah, it's fine. We don't like it, but it's literally not against the law for you to not do it. Yeah. But the, he had a substitute teacher that day. Two weeks in a row, substitutes really not pulling their weight, really making the rest of their profession look bad. The substitute showed up and she's like, you have to stand for the pledge. And he's like, no, I don't. She's like, yes, you do. She's like... And somehow the cops got involved, and he got arrested, and uh, bad, yeah. Bad Florida. But it's hey, happening in Lakeland. Not a lot going on there. She is now banned from teaching in the district, so. That's cool. Good. Yeah. Good. Lakeland. I've been there. Lando Lakes. That's where it was? Lando Lakes? I don't know. Is that oh, what it's there is a Lando Lakes, but Lakeland is a different city. Oh. Yeah. Lakeland, Lando Lakes. Yeah, it's, uh, they got really uncreative. Like, there's not a lot of creativity in Florida St. City. St. Petersburg, St. Pete. There's, there's no, there's just, uh, that's the same city. They're, oh. they're just, all the names are stolen from uh, other places. Hollywood, Florida. Let's say uh, Jupiter, Florida, where uh, Bob Kraft just got arrested. Stolen from the whole planet. He got arrested for, uh, you know, utilizing some prostitutes at a local day spa. Hey, but at least he never knelt during yeah. the... Uh, he stood for the anthem. He stood for the anthem. He stood for the anthem. Yeah. And yeah. he also p potentially got hand jobs or blow jobs from uh, a victim of human trafficking, but allegedly. did that human allegedly, trafficking- Allegedly, but there's video. Did By the that... way, we're talking about the owner of the fucking New England Patriots, if you haven't seen the video. Yeah, movie. America's team, yeah. the Patriots. They stand for the flag, and they fuck prostitutes. Yeah. But they're Ones that are almost prostitutes. entirely confirmed to be Slaves. the result of human yeah. trafficking at this point. Yeah. Yes. Ugh. Bad. Anyway, get fucked, Robert Kraft. Speaking of Florida, Tampa man reported income of $18,000, $497. IRS sent him a refund check for $980,000. Trump did it! <laughs> wow! <laughs> no, this is a, they, they just got him now. This was from 2016. Yeah. He used a great trick that I'm sure he thought worked. One simple trick. When he didn't get immediately arrested, but he, he reported his income, I think, normally, but then under like deductions, under withholding or something. He, he basically wrote that he had already paid a million dollars in taxes. And so uh, I'm sure a human never touched this return. Yeah, yeah. It goes through and he gets his refund check for almost a million dollars. And he's like, it looks like I got away with it. Yeah. And then uh, lived a two or three years of luxury. And then the IRS finally got around to the file and they're like, oh, well, <laughs> This guy's fucked. Yeah. And he is fucked. But oh, it sounds he like he had a good time. A couple, couple good years there. Yeah. Yeah. Bomb threat at Home Depot turned out to be a man warning others about how badly he needed to use the restroom. <laughs> <sighs> this keeps happening. Don't do this in an airport or anywhere. I'm going to go drop a bomb in there. Oof. Watch out. I just I just laid down a bomb in there. Don't go in there. Yeah. This guy, he was apparently he was on the toilet in the Home Depot restroom. Dropping which, bombs! Yeah, so he, anytime someone would come in, he's like, I want to clear the room, there's a bomb in here. Yeah, that would scare me too. Hey, it's just, it's contractor humor. Yeah. So, see, I liked Home Depot better when they didn't let any old 
Twiggy horn rim glass as fuck come in here. It was all contractors and carpenters. No. It was all tough guys like me whose butt cracks got a tan on them. You drop bombs all the time back then. Mm. Can't even drop a bomb at Home Depot anymore without mm. some libtard cuck getting his panties in a bunch, calling the police on me, yeah. a hardworking American. Yep. Who eats a lot of spicy food. Uh, cool. Inmate saves baby from locked SUV using his car theft skills. Hey, that's a good. Uh, I think you gotta let him go now. Have. Yeah, let him out, sir. The exit is right. Think of way. all the babies he could be saving right now if he wasn't behind bars. Yeah, you get you do a couple bad things, you do a couple good things. They even out, I guess. Yeah, yeah. What was he in for? I, I'm sure it's something terrible. Probably I car theft. Like I don't know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he was he was on work detail. They sent him out to like the highway or whatever. He's like. And then these people, they accidentally lock their baby, and they're like, oh, no, we locked the baby in the car. What are we going to do? And That's he's like, it, excuse me. I know how to break into a car. I've stolen many cars. Does My anyone have hero. a coat hanger? Uh, and also, it was, uh, he was in one of those jails where they, like, embarrassed the inmates by waking, making him wear the checkered uh, or the striped old-school jumpsuit. Yeah, it was, it was like the weird ones from, like, old cartoons. Yeah, yeah. They started doing that in around my, not my hometown, but... Uh, the jail was like two counties up, and you'd see him out working uh, like on the highway. And yeah, like, are you shooting a movie? What's going on here? Yeah, no, they started making <laughs> him wear that as like a, a way to embarrass them. I think they're cool though. Yeah, I do orange. too. Also, the, the orange ones have a purpose. Yeah, they're, they're easy to see. <laughs> you can yeah. see them from far away. <laughs> yeah, those ones. Hey, someone gets away, it's harder to find. Yeah, like if there's an escaped convict, and he's I don't know orange. anywhere, you're yeah. just like. Oh, he's over there. Yeah. He's the orange one. Yeah, if you're doing, like, uh, you know, uh, landscaping duty for the jail on, like, Halloween of all days, you just walk away. Well, clearly that man's not a prisoner because he's wearing a prison outfit from 200 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Uh, anyways, father spinning a gun on finger accidentally shoots himself at a daughter's <laughs> birthday party. Did he die? I need to know first. Nah. He, then we can make fun of him. He shot himself in the stomach. Okay, we can make fun of him. Though. Hey, honey, you sweet 60. Oh, God! Well, 50% chance that he would have shot a child, too, so... I know. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, 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 obviously, he's in a room with other people Speaking here. of cartoony things that you would see 60 years ago, spinning a gun on your finger. Look at this! <laughs> uh, God. It's not cool if it's not loaded. Where's the danger? There has to be an element of danger for it to be cool. <laughs> has to be loaded? The safety has to be off. Because I'm pretty sure no modern pistol can... Yeah. Do, I mean, maybe a maybe a revolver. I don't know. Yeah, there, there are a lot of a lot of things had to go wrong for this to happen. Starting with uh, this guy being a, an idiot who probably shouldn't own a gun. Also, he's got to be like typically, it's the, there is resistance on the trigger for a reason. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's so like he's just a couple pounds ham, of force. Ham fisting this fucking gun. Yeah. Too. <laughs> what a fucking moron. Yeah. Well, the guy's daughter got a great birthday present. A lesson. Yeah, a life lesson. <laughs> a life lesson. And so did her dad. <laughs> Estonians rescue wild wolf from ice thinking it was a dog. Well, do they feel any differently about it now that it's a wolf? They saved a life. But it, yeah. it is funny because it's like, they, you know, it's, it's under the ice. All they see is the head being like, help, dying. Yeah. They're like, oh, a cute puppy. Let's get it out. And then they're like, oh, it's a big boy. Yeah. Very big boy. Big teeth. Yeah. What big teeth you have. Hmm. What big eyes you have, Mr. Dog. Yes. Well, I, I don't see any problem with this. I, did you see the post on Reddit a few days back? This, this girl that works at like a wolf sanctuary. Oh, yeah. My, I'm like, holy shit. My fiance showed gigantic. me like the, the Instagram stuff. Yeah, they're big. Yeah. You forget how big wolves are. Mm-hmm. So, Actually, yeah. You know that guy from Colorado is going to be fighting one. Oh, yeah. He's, he's already killed one cougar. Yeah. Next up. And he's fucked a lot of cougars. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. With his fame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I know. I, I know a thing or two about cougars. Nah, nah, nah. Mm. National Weather Service issues small dog warning due to high winds. What? Because dogs are you fucking flying through the wind? Yeah, which has happened apparently. Yeah. They, 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 at least once. They, they pointed to some case from ten years ago where a lady's extremely small Chihuahua got blown away in the wind. Yeah. And they assumed it was dead, and they found it like two days later, a mile away in the woods. Hmm. That dog had. Lots I've seen of, a lot. Lots of stories to tell, but no mouth to tell it with. And the first thing it asked for? Taco Bell. Yeah. Yokiro Taco Bell. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the National Weather Service, their, their tweet with this 
warning is the funniest thing. It's just this dog going like, ah! Floating away. <laughs> Small dog warning. Yeah. Hold on to your tiny dogs. Wisconsin high school cheerleaders received awards for biggest breasts and butt at banquet. And uh, yeah, it was it was the the coaches and trainers giving the awards, and the parents were in attendance. You know, they like they fucking fired that coach that played uh, Fortnite with his students. But this goes on. I don't think it's gonna go on anymore. Yeah, good. But uh, it's, it's it's just brazen, like the whole. The whole system had a big blind spot here, apparently, because all these coaches, they're like, all right, girls, here's your favorite part. Your parents are going to love this. Hey, mom and dad. All right. So we're going to nominate for best butt on our team of underage girls. Uh, Judy, uh, Cynthia. All right, come on up. Spin around. Give them a 360. (laughs) And the parents are like, what the fuck is happening? What the fuck is happening? Wait, these are the people who've been spending four hours every day with our kids? Why didn't a bunch of, like, dads run down and beat the shit out of these people? They're Wisconsin dads. They got the the coronary artery thing. Oh, yeah, you can't Can't move too fast. fast. Yeah, Yeah. Mm. Cheese fed. Yeah. Got cottage cheese in them veins. Mm. Well, uh, that sucks. (laughs) Hopefully they're all fired. Pakistan flag, the best toilet paper in the world, according to Google. (laughs) Google, better chill out. You're going to start a fucking war. Yeah. Things are... They already started they're a tense. war on YouTube, and now they're going to start a real war. India and Pakistan are going to nuke each other because you can't have, you can't be troubled to put humans in charge of your algorithms. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, according to people in India, it's a great toilet paper. According to people <laughs> in Pakistan, probably the other way around. Cool. They oh, should yeah. just manufacture that toilet paper and give it to both sides and be like, there. There, war's over. No more nukes, though. How about yeah. that? Yeah. All right. Mm. It's fair. You can poop on each other's flags and no nukes. Yeah. And yay. It's all good. Chase on San Diego freeways ends in standoff with Star Wars Stormtrooper. Dumb. Yeah, it's stupid. But uh, yeah, I don't know. These guys, they're speeding and they, you know, great Cal- SoCal car chases. Best sport in the world. Uh, you know, they eventually, they gave up and they ran away from the car. The cops, they approaching the car and they're like, someone's still in there. Sir, sir. Put your hands out. It, it, it was getting really tense, but it turned out it was, uh, they were just happening to be driving around with a life-size stormtrooper statue in their uh, their joyride. It would have been fucking, well, not hilarious. If they Sad. shot it? If they shot it like 50 times, and it was no. just like, it's quite obvious that this thing didn't make any aggressive Not movement. my sideshow collectibles. <laughs> it's priceless. They're not dolls, officer. <laughs> it's a collectible. There's nothing sexual about it. He's got a blaster! <laughs> Oh, here's a zinger. Mark Zuckerberg says Facebook has been an innovator in privacy. Wow. It's almost like he's saying the opposite of what's true. Yeah. Almost the exact opposite. Facebook was literally founded on Mark Zuckerberg being a weirdo. Yeah, they give me all their information. <laughs> and he literally stole uh, personal info off of like private servers at Harvard because he couldn't get... When he was making his early Facebook just for Harvard clubs and stuff, some of them wouldn't give him like the pictures, so he just figured out a way to steal them. Yeah. Uh, probably not the guy to trust about privacy and innovation in privacy. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, add this one to the pile. Northern Virginia school under fire after students instructed to play runaway slave game. Cause it's February and- This is in, oh, by the way, uh, just to reiterate, this is in Virginia. Yeah. That is- Yeah. Starting to think Virginia might have, uh, I don't know, might have some problems problems when it comes to their history and the history of uh, it's like racism in this country. It's like the weird news kind of like hops around. It'll be like, everyone always knows Florida. <laughs> like and then Ohio. <laughs> we were covering Ohio stories for forever. Yeah. And then now it's Virginia. Yeah. Virginia. Also, I don't think you put this on there, but someone tweeted to us that dog mayor died. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of dog mares at this point. Yeah. Uh, every every little town that has a city council is like, wouldn't it be cute if we had a dog mare? I vote I. And everyone's like, yes. And then they're like, the dog's old. It's going to die soon. And then the dog lives another 20 years, and it's been mayor for 20 years. Yeah, and he rules with an iron fist. Yeah, he's a real asshole. A little dictator. Yeah. yeah. And he's colluding with the Russians. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> that's it for uh, this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. 
Check out the Vincero link below. Thank you for sponsoring the show because uh, as you guys have probably seen in the news. No ads. Uh, YouTube is going through another ad podcast. Nobody so running ads. Thanks, uh, Vincero, for sponsoring the show. Also, check out other, other episodes over here. We got a brand new episode of News Dump, which is a hoot. And uh, also a full rundown on the whole Jussie Smollett or Smollett, whatever, however you say it, uh, that whole thing. Watch that. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.